All right, now that you have set up your Flask app, you have a Docker container, you got some libraries, we're gonna to deploy to Google Cloud. So you should have done this step before, is prepared your app for deployment, setting up the app. And now we're going to deploy it via the Google CLI, but that's gonna require us to still go to Google Console. So if you go, if you type in uh, Google Console, you'll see Google Cloud Console, and it will take you right back to the same homepage here. This homepage is like you set up projects in the cloud and then you're able to deploy services and resources to the cloud. So here in the upper left, we're going to create a new project, example project, and then create. And then in the upper right, it's going to create your project. I'm going to stay with this project with the Python lecture. This project is really important. So when you set up a Google Cloud, you're going to need to set up billing information if you don't have $300 in Google credits or if you're not a student, things like that, or a startup. So anyways, we have the Google Cloud Server set up. We're going to go on to the next step where we will, um, uh, let me show you really quick. I forgot to show you is if you select a project, it will switch you over to that project. And then you can click the dashboard. And this dashboard is really important. It's going to show you uh, how many API requests are hitting your server per second. Yeah, so you'll get all your information here. And now we're going to then install the CLI. And what CLI is, is it's installing software for your terminal. So Google Cloud CLI. So you're going to go Google Cloud CLI overview here. And then you're going to look for install the Google Cloud CLI. So um, if you have a Mac OS, just click this tab and it will walk you through a step-by-step -step of what you need to do. For Windows, it's a little easier. All you have to do is click the installer, open up the executable file, um, skip this, accept the terms. So you are, just so you're aware, you're literally connecting Google to your computer locally. So you're able to access and deploy software from there. So now you can select single user, all users. I can select the hard drive and then it's going to ask me this. Do you want bundled Python install? So this CLI is coded in Python and you click install. And it installed already, so I'm going to say no. But after it, it finishes installing, we need to check that it works. So if we go to our PowerShell, Windows PowerShell, you can type Google uh, Cloud, G Cloud and you should get all this help information show up here. I can zoom in. So I typed in Google Cloud help. So I can just um, access Google Cloud help. There you go. And it should pop up with all that information there. So that's how you make sure that it's working. Now, after you have that installed, we are going to do, we're going to initialize Google Cloud with our application. So back to our VS code here, we're going to zoom in on the terminal again going to clear the terminal. All right, and then we're going to do G cloud init. All right, so I've already set up an app, but I'm going to reinitialize the app or you could create a new configuration here, but I'm going to click one and then it's going to set everything back up. And then at this step, it's going to ask you to log in with your Gmail account. So if you created a Google Cloud account, you're going to log in with your Gmail account. I'm going to use my Gmail account here. And now I've created a project before. I've created these example projects, but I'm going to do the Python lecture and just click eight. So any projects you make, if we go back to um, see the, let's see if I can find it here. Here we go. If I go back to the Google Cloud dashboard, we have all these projects, right? Oh, it's lagging terribly. So, oh, it's not liking it. Okay, I have no idea why it did that. Okay, here, let me try again. All right, 
So here, you can see all my projects were loaded. Those are the same exact projects right here. So to access one specific project. So if you're working for a client, you go through and click that project and things like that that you're setting up for them. Oops, eight, there we go. All right then. So after you initialize your app, you selected the project, you logged into your Google Cloud, you're going to finally go ahead and deploy the app. So the way you do that is you're going to type Google, uh, Google G Cloud. I keep forgetting it's G Cloud, not Google Cloud. Run deploy dash dash source and then a period. So what this means, let me zoom in again, is that we're saying Google Cloud run and deploy. So it's going to take a resource and then all the code here by all the code in this file, right? Everything in my repo, it's going to uh, basically run up oh, and I see a uh, error already. So make sure that all your files are under the correct repo. Um, if not, it won't work. All right, so when you run this command, the first thing it will say is service name and you guys just say test app. All right. And then you'll get a list. And this is a list of all the data centers across the world that Google has uh, in Asia, in Australia, Europe, uh, South America, North America. I'm just gonna do East Coast, US East, so 32. If you set up your app all the way in Australia, you're gonna have some latency. And then here's this step. It says unauthenticated invocations. Basically, if somebody wants to use your app and you say no, they're going to need a secret key to set that up. So that's a whole nother step. But since we're prototyping and we're just trying to get this up for a customer, we don't want to bother with that right now. So you're just going to say yes, you're going to allow unauthenticated request. So it's going to take all our code here inside and then go ahead and deploy that, hopefully without any bugs. Okay, great. So here we are. Is that um, I'm going to just walk through this. So it's saying that our service is available, so I can click this hyperlink and it will take me to the console again. And it's basically showing me that the app, oh, it's not perfect technology here. Source is unavailable. Yeah, so right here, it's 12.36 p.m. It's now two minutes later. It has deployed here, and then we can take a view of that. Or we click it, the build. There. So it's gone through and ran the Docker file step-by-step step right in here, and then Docker is running and compiling code. So all those steps that we wrote in the last video was executed right here on the cloud. You can see it copied the back end and did all this stuff and then installed our libraries, installed all the Python libraries. So if anything goes wrong, this is where you would kind of catch it. Um, and then it went ahead and created some traffic, it routed traffic through the, for the internet and it set up some security policies, IAM policies like identity things for, you know, just for your Google account to access. And then we can click this URL to see our app was deployed. Now it might, our local app was now deployed and we have this domain. So you'll just replace this domain with like a real domain name later on and redirect it. But for now, just for a prototype, we're just trying to get this deployed on the cloud. We have basically done it. So we, um, the last thing I want to teach you is how to debug. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this text file. And then I'm going to run the server again without the text file. And we're going to see why that will cause the issue. So um, bug app 32 East, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to deploy again and it should break. All right, there, it broke. So now if you ever have a bug with your deployment, you'll learn that we'll go to the logs here. We'll just open this up. It will identify what went wrong. So we can see here that you'll get this like icon and then we can scroll down to see what went wrong. And it basically told us, can I zoom in somehow, expand? 
no. It's not a very good way. Um, see if I can zoom in a lot more. It's not a good way to zoom in, but it says could not open the required file. So when it got to that step in the Docker file, when it got to step 13, it was like, where's the requirements.txt? Because I deleted it. Control Z, and here's our file, and it will work again. So that's how you kind of debug your deployments is coming back to this cloud build and checking the history to see if anything went wrong. So if we check the history here, so all my other past builds went good and then I caused a bug to happen. So that's how you kind of debug your deployments and things like that. But now I'm going to teach you how to spin down. So when you run a cloud server, you're spending money. So you're spending like quarter of a cent here. So I have my test app. I'm just going to go ahead and then delete that. So uh, just to do that again, if you look on the left-hand side of the nav bar, just click cloud run and it takes you to this page and then you click delete. Okay, great. So now we have done that. We're going to continue on to the next step. That is we're going to call some stock market data on uh, IBM, you know, the price of a stock changes every second in the stock market. And you can get that data from an API. And then we can use that API and feed it to machine learning models. And then we can kind of deploy that tool to be given to other customers. That is the next video.